So today I'm reviewing Little Fish by Casey Pollitt. This is a novel set in Winnipeg, Canada in the winter. The main character is Wendy, a 30 year old trans woman whose grandmother has just passed away. I'll just read the blurb to give you the overview. When her Oma passes away, Wendy receives an unexpected phone call from a distant family friend with a startling secret. Wendy's opa, a devout Mennonite farmer, might have been transgender himself. At first she dismisses this revelation, but as Wendy's life grows increasingly volatile, she finds herself aching for the lost pieces of her opa's truth. Can Wendy unravel the mystery of her grandfather's world and reckon with the culture that both shaped and rejected her? She's determined to try. So, what to say about this book? Um, uh, what came to mind when I was reading this book was a different book called Stone Butch Blues by Leslie Feinberg, which is a semi-autobiographical novel set between, I think, like the 40s and the 70s um, about a character assigned female at birth who is trans of some description, trans man or maybe non-binary, um, who identifies as butch, um, and just basically going through their life. And this would have reminded me of that in a way because again it's not a trans character and it's not very plotty. It's a very character driven story about this person's sort of daily life and their experiences and another similarity is that it's just both very depressing like very dark very um realistic with the sorts of transphobia that they face and yeah it, it was not like a light-hearted happy read it was definitely a at times really heartbreaking, sad read, just very sad. Um, yeah, because there's no like overall plot, it's sort of hard to describe in brief, but basically sorts of things that happens is, um, yeah, her, her grandma dies. I don't think she's super grieving about that. I, I don't think she was very close to her grandma, but she is sort of thrown up about this lady that calls and, and and speaks to her, the lady on the other end of the line, her name's Anna, and she said she was a friend of the grandfather and wanted to tell um, her grandmother a secret, basically, but didn't know the grandmother had just died, and she didn't know who she was speaking with, but she was like, oh, you know, their grandchild, as in herself, um, Tulip, which used to be Wendy's name when she first came out. Uh, well, the grandfather was like Tulip, and so Wendy takes it to mean that the grandfather was trans, as it says on the back cover. But then later Anna thinks that maybe, um, Anna sort of clarifies that she meant, like, gay. Um, so it's unclear throughout the story whether the grandfather was actually a trans woman or a gay man. Um, so yeah, she sort of comes back to thinking about that and talking to this old woman, Anna, on the phone and she eventually does go see her in person. So that's a thread throughout, but then you've also just got her general life. Um, she is an alcoholic, so she is drinking a lot every single day, and yeah, definitely uses alcohol to to cope with um, life. Uh, it's very uncomfortable to read the alcoholism. Um, I think it's supposed to be, but yeah. Um, and then you see her friends, so she has a group of other trans women that she is friends with. So you've got Lila, Raina, and Sophie are the main ones. And Sophie ends up killing herself, which was really sad. Um, Wendy was absolutely devastated. Um, Wendy herself is suicidal. There is a lot of suicidality throughout this book. Um, and it's, in my opinion, quite realistically done because it's not 
one thing that sets her off to make her suicidal and it's doesn't really even reach a fever pitch like you don't see her like do any sort of self-harm apart from obviously being alcoholic you don't see her do like self-harm or anything like that but it's just sort of like she just sometimes just thinks about how she's gonna throw herself out the window or something like that but then later on she says no she, she, if she did actually kill herself she's got an actual plan of how she would do that and you know several steps in her plan you know it's all planned out so as long as she doesn't get started on the first step then she knows she's not gonna actually die so it's almost like a bit of a security blanket and it's like quite common for the other trans women she knows to also be suicidal or to have plans and she and Sophie actually were talking one night and she says to Sophie like sorry to ask you this but are you suicidal and Sophie says she is and then she like says you know is there anything I can do to support you like can I just call you up to check in with you sometimes you know I, I have had a friend previously a trans woman previously who was my friend who killed herself and I was really sad and I really want you in my life so and Sophie seems you know really hardened by that and and says she, you know yes yes to all this stuff but then she does still end up killing herself so it's just a very disorienting devastating experience for Wendy and her other friends and you get to see that um how it affects their life um you've also got her her job she just works in the gift shop and the gift shops um getting sold to like so she's not going to have that same job and so she's previously done sex work she gets back into sex work her, um, her, her sort of job is winding up at this current place she has about a month or so left they're in the middle of Christmas so basically after Christmas the store will shut down but she wants to get some money saved up before then so she gets back into sex work and so you see all of her um, her out calls and yeah, there's a lot of, um, uh, how would you describe it, disturbing encounters, there's a lot of disturbing encounters, as well as that there is a lot of um, recounting or um, descriptions of sexual assault, um, I think, uh, I think mostly outside of the sex work for her, um, there's a lot of the overall vibe with this character Wendy is that she isn't really an active participant in her life she feels like decisions are made for her and she gets swept along with it she's 30 years old at, at the time of this story and she does reflect towards the end of the story that it seems like not much has changed for her since she was 19 even though she's eight years into transition she has had GRS, she has been on hormones, she's now um, changing up her hormone regime a little bit by adding in progesterone, um, which she actually got from a dealer. And she is worried about, at one point, about if it is affecting her health, because she starts getting these little bubbles in her hands, but the, de the dermatologist does, says it just happens sometimes. But she didn't tell the dermatologist that she was taking progesterone. Anyway, so, yeah, things have changed in her life in terms of she's transitioned and she's in a different place in terms of that but she's lived in the same place her whole life and she doesn't have a strong direction so she really just seems to mute everything with the alcohol use and tries not to think about things and she goes along with things that are really not good for her a lot of the time um, and it's not like her entire existence is in completely miserable like she does have I would say little pockets of of happiness or positivity mostly with her friends and her dad seems pretty nice as well um but overall i would say it's quite sad and quite she's quite a passive person in her own life um she doesn't really make plans and she doesn't really make good choices for herself and she kind of avoids making any choices at all really um, so yeah, there's tons of trigger warnings for this book, um, as I said, sexual assault, suicidality, um, her friend actually goes ahead with suicide, um, alcoholism, 
deaths in the family, um, tons of transphobia that she faces and her friends. Possibly even other things that I can't even think of right now. Um, that being said, it was still a good read. Like, I very much connected with Wendy and her story. I felt she was a very realistic character and a lot of the things she goes through are things that trans women go through and some of the reviews on the back talk, talk to, to that point that you know, um, this person said, I've never feel, fe felt as seen as understood or as spoken to as I did when I read Little Fish. Never before in my life. Casey remains one of the best authors to read if you want to understand the interior lives of trans women, women in this century. And that was Meredith Russo, author of If I Was Your Girl. So I think it is realistic and that's why it does remind me of Stone Butch Blues because I thought that was, well, I have less... Um, understanding of what life was like back in that time period for trans men or trans non-binary people um, than this which is like a modern time frame for trans women so I probably can comment even less on Stone Butch, Stone Butch Blues but because it was a semi-autobiographical I take it that is very realistic depiction and this also felt like a very realistic depiction so yeah, if you want to read something that is realistic, that is brutally honest, I think it's a good book, but I would be very careful uh, depending what mind space you're in because of all that content, which I think would be quite triggering. Um, some, another interesting aspect I found was these mention of Mennonites. I haven't really heard of that before and I haven't googled it or anything so just from contextual clues I'm gathering that there's some sort of Christian sect that's quite conservative and linked to farming they sort of gave me a Amish vibe because they do speak German um, well Wendy doesn't but she mentions that other Mennonites do so that reminded me of what I have heard of some Amish people, so maybe maybe that's related. I'll have to Google that afterwards, but that was an interesting aspect. Um, religion doesn't get too heavy into this like an explicit discussion of religion until Wendy actually physically visits Anna. Um, and Anna, it turns out, is gay herself, but like has not acted on it her whole life and she's in her 80s now but she feels like god gave her strength to not act on that and that she was you know a good christian for not doing that and she does talk to anna and i'm sorry she does talk to wendy but wendy's like pretending to be not herself like she said she gave her name to anna but she said that she was a friend of the family not actually um henry's granddaughter um, but Anna like works it out so it's, it's actually like quite shocking because they're having this conversation and Anna's saying some like dicey things about queer people but like in her own way seems to like be trying to be nice and like share about Henry and like his life and stuff um, and then out of the blue she's like do you think I'm stupid to, when, to Wendy like I know that you are Tulip or you know whatever the dead name is but then, like, she just leaves, and then she calls her up later, and she's like, nice to see you and stuff. So it's, like, a very, like, weird, it's, like, weird situation. Um, but yes, while she is, while Wendy is talking to Anna, they do briefly discuss religion, because Anna is talking about how Henry was a very devout man, and, you know, maybe he did have some contact with her at some point, but at least for the last ten years of his life, he was a very good Christian, and she is sure he is with God. Um, and they were talking about reading the Bible and like a few other little things like that, which maybe I would have gotten more out if I knew out of, out of it, if I knew a little bit more about Mennonites. Um, yeah. So, 
I think it's a worthwhile book. I am happy that I read it. I would really like to read stories with more trans characters and even though this was really realistic I would like to see something that does have a more hopeful ending and maybe just a bit more positive overall. That would be nice. It did end like just very kind of abruptly like she goes to see a client um to have a sex work they have sex and then And then it says, what kind of world does the core of your brain expect that you, you personally get to live in? When do you want to be loved? However easily she might have abandoned or ruined her prospects, prospects Wendy did still believe she would have love. By the elevators in front of the open staircase, Wendy looked through the window expecting a storm, but it had stopped snowing. Under an arch, she could see a parking lot and an old gilded apartment building less, uh, across the way. The street was pristine and quiet and footprintless. She walked through the reflected marble lobby. The roads outside were empty sheets of blue and white, eyes stretching far, far away, looking like outer space. She put on her headphones as she walked through the revolving doors into the night. She felt okay about her where her life was headed. So you would think by that last line that, like, maybe something is hopeful for her, but it really does not seem like it. Like, I guess, yes, her friend did find a house for them to move into since they got evicted from their current house, so she has, like, probably somewhere to live, but she doesn't really know what her job's going to be, and she doesn't really have any other prospects and hasn't really, before this point, actually articulated any direction about where she wants her life to head. So this last line does not actually feel positive to me. It just feels like she's, again, not actually... Planning her life or trying to make headways into anything positive. She did, like, at some point towards the end, start at least asking some questions about what she wanted to do with her life, but she didn't actually have any answers. So, I don't know how to feel about it. it seems a bit of a dismal ending to me. Um, but it was in line with the rest of the book, so I guess that's not that strange. Um, while I was reading that, actually, I thought about another aspect of the book I found interesting, which was sexuality. So, Wendy basically said that since she started taking HRT that her interest in men had appeared and pretty much she mostly slept with men now and considered herself straight. But um, there is one woman, another trans woman, she actually s sleeps with during the book. Um, her name, beginning with an A, but I can't remember. I can't remember. Anyway, some person that's from out of town who she actually met at Sophie's funeral, she um, ends up sleeping with her and it seems like quite a... I don't know, maybe not a positive experience? Somewhat positive. It seems more enjoyable for her than the sex we see her have with men. Um, and I think she likes it. Like, I think she has a crush on her but she like is calling herself straight and then towards the end some of her friends are like no you're a lesbian and you're just having men with sex with men to um validate yourself and she does sort of question for like in this few paragraphs where she's questioning about her life she does sort of question like do do i like men do i like sex in general she doesn't even know, like, she doesn't even know that about herself. And there's this really good description that was talking about how, um, her life in general, but, like, her sex life in particular, it just sort of seems like silt on the bottom of, like, a river, and she, like, sort of can see it, but then when she actually goes to grasp it, it like, slips through her fingers, and, like, it just seems like that, like, her whole perspective is so just, like, hazy and murky, and I don't think she can even understand herself. Um... But yeah, I definitely read her as a queer woman that maybe does use men to validate and maybe even self-harm. But she does, that one of those last lines in the book, she does want to be loved, but she sort of doubts that she can find love and men do tend to treat her really bad. Um, she has not had good experiences with them, so... Interesting. A lot of interesting things. I think a lot of trans people would like recognize a lot of um, things that they can relate to. And so, yeah, if you're in a good headspace to read it, I would recommend it. Overall, I did enjoy it. And it has made me want to read more 
stories with trans characters and hopefully find some more positive stories. So overall I would give this 4 out of 5 stars and I'll leave it there.